got this one. Okay, this song is You Are Good. Um, so just join along, along in the chorus. We'll play it through a couple times so everyone can learn it.
praise you, Jesus. We worship you. You are holy and glorious and worthy of all glory, honor, and splendor, Lord. You're amazing, and we love you. We just thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing, Lord, in our lives, in our country, Lord, the things you want to change, the things you want to do, Lord. We just lift all this up to you, and we praise your name. Amen. This next song is completely yours, so again, you can listen along and then join us. Jesus, we thank you and praise you. Lord, you're holy, you're glorious. We love you, Lord. We just lift up our praise to you. Amen. 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 There you go. You know that one day you're going to be dead. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, well, thank you. Thank you so much. 
All right, so our next speaker is Mrs. Mickey Murray. And Mickey, you are the representative for uh, CD, CD4. All right, here you go. Hi, baby. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mickey Murray, and I live in House District 66B, which is like over that way, off of Rice Street and kind of over that way. And I'm running for the House seat over there. But I also come as the chair of Congressional District 4, which includes basically Ramsey County and maybe half of Washington County for the Republican Party. You know, I went to the rally today, and um, <coughs> I had someone walk up to me, and she said, I was standing by myself, and she said, did you come alone? And I said, yes. And she said, oh, my gosh, I, I was just so afraid. I almost didn't come. And I said, well, why? And why would you be afraid? And that's part of the challenge that we all have to deal with in this environment that we live in, right? We have to deal with fear. Now, now we deal a lot with other people's fear. There's all kinds of social media and stuff on the television talking about fear. Now, it comes in a lot of different ways, but that screaming in your face thing, that's a fear that uh, all those weird things that you get in social media that tell you there's something evil about you, that's somebody else's fear. And they're trying to put it on you or they're trying to put it on me. And the fact of the matter is, we have no reason to be afraid, right? Especially as believers, we have absolutely no reason to be afraid. Now we need to be wise and not be stupid, not make foolish decisions, but the fact of the matter is, there's no reason for us to fear. And so we take that sort of environment with us when we talk to other people so that they are not afraid either. So I spent a few minutes talking to this woman who was afraid to come to a rally that was totally awesome. I mean, yeah, there was a mess over in the corner and we got a little bit of uh, update on that piece of the story. But the fact of the matter is we were there to celebrate freedom. We were there to celebrate Christ. We were there to celebrate the opportunity for all of us to make an impact on the community around us. And that's really what's drawing us together. It draws people together in the church. It prompts us to go out from the church to do the same thing, to make an impact on this world around us. Well, the fact is, no matter how we come and approach our neighbors, approach people that we don't know, we have every reason to bring them hope that we bring the change that is needed. And that's what we have to be confident of. So I'm running for office because we need that change. So all of the chaos that's happening in the world, it's taken up all of our time on TV and in the news and wherever you're listening, all of that is a sign of the change, the need for change. So we bring the hope and the structure that that change needs to come in. So you cannot be afraid. We cannot be afraid because we bring the way that change is going to happen. So eventually, we have to get past our fear, our emotions, and we help other people do the same, or we get around those who can't make that distinction, and we bring the change that's needed. So as citizens, right, as those who are able to vote, that's one of the ways you bring that change. As people who are active in school or active in your workplace, that's another way you bring the change. People are afraid even there. And that's just a, you know, a subset of the rest of the world. But with our neighbors, we bring the change. We open up the opportunity for other people to make a difference while we make a difference. Invite people to join you because you're here, even in the body of Christ, to bring that change, right? We've got the parameters, really, that's needed all around us. So you cannot be afraid. You have to be confident in who you are. You have to be confident. We had somebody stand up here talking about right doctrine. That's where the confidence comes from. So thank you all for coming. Thank you all for just, I, it's been fun to watch people join in in the songs. And you can tell who, whose church this is because everybody walks around singing the songs. So it's great. <laughs> but thank you for the change that you bring. And please encourage one another to stay strong. Encourage one another to stay right. Always encourage one another. And thank you. Hey, let's pray for you. Lord, we just give you Mickey, even though she's in the wrong district. 
But Lord, this is going out. This is going out everywhere. And so, Lord, we just ask your anointing upon her. And that God, that supernaturally, I know with all the fraud that's going to go on, early voting and all that kind of stuff, God, would you please just supernaturally just work it on people's hearts and minds to just for whatever reason, just check that box, Lord. If they want Mickey to be their representative, they'll come up on, on, on Tuesday, November 3rd and check that box. If they don't want her to be a representative, they'll show up on November 4th. Lord Jesus, we just ask you to be Lord and lifted up of her life. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. 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 You bet, you bet. Pablo's going to come on up. All right, so Pablo's going to, a couple songs? Yeah, couple two times. songs, two songs. And then, uh, Alex, I'm going to have you come up. All right, so you got a couple songs. You're going to go with this. I'll hold the mic for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Where to I put that mic stand? There we go. Oh. Hey, I'm looking for volunteers after the rapture of the church. I need someone to watch my stuff. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. All right, Pablo. <laughs> All right, this song's called Psalm 121. And so I'll go through the course a couple of times. That way you guys can learn how to sing along.
You are holy. You are the one and true living God, Lord Jesus. We love you and give you bless your name. Love you, Lord Jesus. The song is Psalm 103.
Jesus You are gracious and full of mercy Slow to anger, judging righteously Our transgressions you have forgiven From east to west you have removed them And bless your name word here for you. Uh, someone came up to me and they wanted to attend church with us tomorrow. I have a joy because uh, she was oppressed today uh, at the state capitol. So I had her save her voice. So uh, she's going to be sharing and singing tomorrow at church. Um, and uh, so if you want to join us for that, there's flyers. Some of the youth are rocking around with the uh, flyers to the church, but someone asked me for a flyer to the church. And um, here's the thing with Calvary Chapel St. Paul. We own this coffee house, but we can meet anywhere for church. So if you find us, then you really wanted to be there. All right. Hey, I'm going to be going through. We go through the Bible chapter by chapter, verse by verse, book by book. We just finished 3 John last week, and now we're going to be the book of Jude tomorrow. But let me give you a little foretaste. Jude, uh, verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to all the saints. Listen to me. You can all go to hell. I didn't say go there. I said you could go there. Now that I have your attention, understand this is that we need to contend for the faith. And this isn't how I'm going to be on Sunday. I'm really calm right now. <laughs> and the ones are laughing, you know that's true. All right. But, beloved, that we have this to do due diligence. 
to do due diligence to earnestly contend for the faith. Now, Jude wanted to write unto us about a common salvation. I want you to understand why we're contending and why we're doing this. All right? This isn't a Christian event, but there's a, this is Christians putting on this event because we want people to get out and vote. In person, by the way. Not like we did in Chicago, where I'm originally from. Vote early and vote often. Just one person, one vote, and show up in person. Because, listen, this is a spiritual battle. If you don't realize on your sample ballot that you can get right now, there are a lot of Christians who are running for office right now. And the reason why they're running for office is because Christians left the public domain years ago. Pastors and preachers gave up teaching the word of God. And that's why we put on here about the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, our own state constitution all mentions God. And when our constitution here in Minnesota was ratified or revised in 1974, they could have taken God out of it. Now listen, you can go to your sample ballot for District 67. Every one of those candidates were invited to be here. We have certified letters we sent out. Every one of them had the opportunity. We had the group from uh, BLM. They didn't want to come. We've, had, we've invited every group. We invited the potheads, uh, the legal marijuana guys. Maybe they're still trying to find us, all right? But we told them there's food here, all right? We did everything we could. So you looked. You do whatever you want with that information. We invited everyone on District 67 to come here, and we have the certified letters to prove it. So much so that the Attorney General's office called on Tuesday talking to me and wanted to know how they could categorize this event because they're trying to shut us down. Listen, this is a spiritual battle. And follow the money, number one, come from a long line of criminals, follow the one. People say, why do you know the Constitution so well? Because I was a criminal. I knew exactly what was a misdemeanor, a gross misdemeanor, grand theft, and all the stuff. I knew exactly what it was. When I would sit in jail, I participated in the justice system. You know who was in jail? Just us. And the first thing you do in jail is you ask the guy next to you, who's your lawyer? And that's who you don't use next time. Because the only ones who go to jails are the ones with bad lawyers. The really good ones are our state representatives. All right? You know where liars go? You know where liars go? Where do the liars go to hell? No, they don't go to hell. People who reject Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, they go to hell. People who lie to me will get handcuffed to the pole in my basement. Do not lie to me. Do not lie to me. You might not like the truth, but do not lie to me. I mean, does this hat make me look fat? All right, thank you. Don't lie to me. But we need to earnestly contend for the faith. And it's Christians who need to. Hey, Jedediah, don't do exactly what I told you not to do by walking in front of the camera. There you go. Does everyone see him? Very good. All right. There you go. And right by the camera, too. Very good. All right. Hey, so what's happening is, is that you need to earnestly contend for the faith. And that's what we're doing here. Every one of these candidates were invited. This, it, why are we the only ones showing up? Everyone was invited. I told those from BLM that they needed to uh, come here. They don't have to shout. I can do the shouting. Just come here. Tell us what you believe in God, the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and a Minnesota state constitution. Tell us what your views on that. This isn't a debate. And then pitch to us. Listen, the hardest thing I ever needed to do was to convince my wife's mom that I wanted to marry her daughter, and I needed to convince her that she was better off with me than with you. All right? Now, I'm Greek, and I wasn't promising certain intimate things better than anybody else. I did promise grandkids. But I wanted you to understand, I'm courting her, and I want you to understand why Kimberly, Brandon, by the way, my wife's from Tucson, Arizona. You're really not from there, but she is. Do whatever you want with that, Brandon. Um, but the thing is, is that I need to say, look, this is why she's going to be better off with me. 
And I was able to sell it on that. I was able to do it. Before I could finish anything, her mom was saying, take her, take her, take her, take her. I was like, let me, I have the whole thing ready to go. And I was just, I wanted to pray with her. I wanted to seek the Lord. I, that's courtship. And so that's what I presented. I've talked to candidates. I've let them know, listen, this is a courtship. This is an opportunity for you to come and tell your potential constituents why they're going to be better off with you than anyone else. You see, that's why this isn't a campaign. This isn't a, a candidate. Alexander Buster Deputy is our missionary from our church. That's why we're doing anything. Listen, and I tell you what, uh, someone tries to suggest to me to read a book, Win Friends and Influence Others. Can anyone tell I haven't read that book? Because I'm chasing away people and influencing the world for Christ, and that's what I want to be about. I want to make it clear to everybody here, I have all the friends I'll ever need for the rest of my life. You're absolutely 100% not needed, but we need Jesus Christ as our Savior, Lord, and we need to contend earnestly for the faith, and that means re-engaging. And I'm not trying to misapply scripture here. Jesus said, occupy till I come. You don't like being here? I don't like being here. I don't like being here. People say, how you doing? Horrible. Went to the doctor last week. He gave me the worst possible news. He goes, what? You're in perfect health. No! Someone told me years ago, if I stop eating red meat, I've had 15 years to my life. All I'm hearing is double down on the cheeseburgers. You don't, you don't tell me that. Everybody here knows if I collapse or whatever, and someone's, all the police reports is going to be is like they, they beat up the church member because they were trying to revive the pastor. Don't be that one. I wake up, and you got your mouth on me and your pound. I'm going to choke you out. It's Jesus I want to be with. Do we not want to be in heaven? Yeah. Then don't get upset when you get your ticket punched and they tell you you got some type of terminal disease. Come back and tell the church, I know when I'm leaving. I know when I get out of here. You got to stay. I get to go. Listen, I've been to over 300 deaths. I stopped counting. I've been a chaplain. I've been a pastor. And I have never, not one person has ever said, I wish I had more life to finish that project at work. I think I forgot something. I'm telling you where to earnestly contend for the faith that is that common. Now, Jude wanted to write about the common salvation we have, but everyone gets uh, upset about how many angels can dance on the head of a pen. Did Adam have a navel or not? Uh, there's just uh, crazy things. We are to earnestly contend for the faith, for the true word of God. And that's what's empty in the pulpits. And that's what's happening here. That's why we never closed our doors. Hey, you're sick. We have a policy here. You're sick. Stay away. My kids know all about quarantine. You're sick. Go away. We'll feed you under the door. God made rooms with doors on them. Who are we to argue with his will? Stay away. No, I don't need a government to tell me that. And so here's the thing is that for you and I, you got to make that choice. What is your line? The governor just extended his powers for another 30 days or whatever. He doesn't even get them. Listen, what is your line, Christian? And here's the thing. Follow the money. And number two, why is there so, such an overt attempt to close churches? To close churches. What's the threat? The murdering abortion mill stayed open. The pot shop stayed open. The liquor store stayed open. Menards and Home Depot and all the other places. Walmart stayed open. All those things stayed open. What, so it just doesn't make sense. But the world's lying to us. You know the thing about, de, about deception? It's deceitful. Very subtle. It doesn't come at you like that. Here's the thing for you and I, folks. We need to earnestly contend for the faith. And we need to be Bible-believing, preaching, and living out God's word. All right? When someone calls me a Jesus freak, I say thank you very much. Whose freak are you? Whose freak are you? I had another pastor who once called me a pester. He said, you're like a pester. You're like a, between a pest and a pastor. I said, so some of you get my emails, and you see I, I write it in his grip, pester chick. And you go, that's a typo. No, that's not a typo. I, I get it. I get it. He says, how could you turn an insult into a compliment? That wasn't a compliment. You understand there, folks? I have all the friends I'll ever need for the rest of my life, all right? And I found a woman who will hug and kiss this mug of mine, and I'm hanging on for dear life. <laughs> but Jesus Christ is our Savior and Lord, and it's getting darker and darker, 
and the most dim lit wit Christian is going to shine brightly. You do not have the luxury to be an undercover, deep undercover Christian anymore. So if anything, we haven't been exposed to the Chinese virus out of Wuhan. It has exposed the body of Christ. It has exposed Christians. And you know what? If it's now that you're getting into the race, if it's now that you're getting involved, folks, what do I say? You're here now. You're here now, man. You're here now. It's just all that just matters is you're here now. Let's go do it. Like we said in the Marines, it's a target-rich environment. Let's tag them and bag them. You ready? Come on, Ed. A couple songs, man. And make them to Jesus, man. This might be our last opportunity to worship Jesus. And again, I need someone to watch my stuff after the rapture. So if it's at you, come talk to me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Actually, uh, uh, there's a song that, that uh, I writ, writ, r- wrote uh, that uh, falls right in line with this. And so it's a song, just listen to the lyrics, listen to the words. So. a deeper love a love that is rare to this world but one that changes hearts God I don't have this love myself I look to you for challenges I face It's your love that gives me strength to take it day by day Your sacrifice gives me grace to walk humbly with you Oh God help me keep space that I may finish this race your love is what I need I need your spirit in me by faith I walk uprightly now I must trust in you there's not much more I can do more 
This road I have chosen requires a deeper love, a love that is rare to this world, but one that changes hearts. teach you this part. We sing glory to you. You are worthy of our praise. We sing glory to you forever, ever, evermore. We sing glory to you. You are worthy We 
sing glory to you forever, ever, evermore. We sing glory to you. You are worthy of our praise. We sing glory to you forever, ever, evermore. We sing Thank you, Eduardo. All right. Hey, it is my privilege to introduce our next guest to you. But before I do, I want to be able to introduce you to somebody that is going to change your life. I can't say that I have known this man long, but what I do know of this man is love, true love. And when I, when I introduced this man to you, I, I talked about, about the grace and the mercy, I've never seen so much compassion from this man and forgiveness and gentleness, but, but manliness. The man that I'm going to introduce to you right now is none other than Jesus Christ. And to tell us some things that God's done in his life is Alexander. <laughs> Rachel, man, tell us why. Remember, the hardest thing you ever did was court your wife. Tell them why. They're going to be better off with you. So for the last 15 years, I have been sitting under my pastor's teaching. And obviously, there has been many people coming and going because the teaching may be a little different and may be hard at times. But th there is nothing short of God's working in him to reach us. You know, because I have, I have heard his jokes many a times, and I have been part of it, but he is a pester. It's, I mean, it's great. It's great. I mean, because I have heard it over and over, but then it just clicked for me, you know? And I have not had someone else who have caused me so much anger, but also loved me so much. And that is the blessing I have in him. And he has been a blessing to me ever since I started coming to a church. You see, because it was about 17 years ago that somebody shared Jesus with me. Right? Um, I grew up in church. I grew up going to church, but never really had a relationship with God. I did not even know what a relationship with God was. I, um, I just knew that if I just go to church, God is there somewhere. As long as I stay, stay close to him, everything is okay. But until at the age of like 17, 18, when my life decided to, well, actually, when, when I decided to turn to sin rather than turn to a God. Regardless of the circumstance that was in my life, I turned away from that knowledge of, of God. And... It was a couple years of just uh, trying to find God. But someone took the time to share Jesus with me. And he also took the time to do something that is just very strange, you know, nowadays. He actually took the time to teach me the Bible. He took the time and read it to me and explained to me, hey, this is how... God desires you to live. 
this is uh, this is your responsibility as a person, as a future father, as a you know, a, as a husband. And the reason the reason that I'm explaining all of this because it's going to bring us up to you know you know here later. Okay, so I got saved. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I'm learning how to walk with God. I'm learning how to hear his voice in my life. Okay? But then we all, well, all of us that was attending church heard the same message, but, but God spoke to us differently as far as our calling in life. And I had, and I had always wondered about that calling in life, and didn't really know where or what it was. I decided to to just seek him and ask him. But it was cool because my pastor loved history, and he always kept giving us little history snippet. I mean, and just all of these historical lessons and for me it was like oh yeah tell me more like tell me more so I would go home and research it and I would research it and I just kept researching more and more and kept literally just kept doing it and then uh, it turns out that I ended up learning more about this glorious and wonderful country and some of you may not know that I am an immigrant from Liberia. We came here about 30 years ago, and um, my family immigrated here because there was a genocide. It wasn't really a war. It was a genocide because the other side had guns, and we didn't have guns. Because of that, we fled and came here. So we came here, and so here I am learning about God and learning about the uh, path he has for me. And and uh, through some, just through some years, I started to fall in love with our country document, right? The American document, because America is unique. Like, I, um, I just never really understood it until I became a Christian, you know? I never really understood why uh, America was different from others, countries, you know, and uh, and our public school doesn't really do us justice either. So because of that, I came to church to learn about that, <laughs> right? But uh, but yeah, so uh, learning, just learning about, just learning about our system and and just taking the time to actually press forward in it. But then I started hearing God directing me to go into taking a course on the Constitution. I did it. I graduated that and, and just all of that stuff. But the thing about how I, how I came here and some of you may know my know my story about my you know family and my kids and my wife and all that. I was gonna go into this direction today, but uh, but yeah, so just really taking the time to step up because for the years and years that my pastor poured into me. God was working in me, and he was doing a work that I was not ready for yet, you know, but throughout the whole time, just looking back and seeing how God's hand was on it the whole time, all right? So, and now I am here, and before I came here, before I came to where I am at right now, um, I did not want to run, you know, and it was something that 
I was just stepping back to see if somebody else would do it. You know, hoping somebody else would do it, right? You know, and like Moses, definitely, you know, because I'm like, Lord, I don't know, I can't really talk right, but somebody else do it, you know? But then I remember deleting the, deleting the email. And then somebody sent it to me. May I not mention who it is? He sent me the exact email. He did not know. He did not know about this at all. Like, I don't, like, I do not even think that he knew until now that I deleted that email because I'm like, hey, somebody else can do it, right? Somebody else is going to uh, do it. He sent me the email, was like, what do you think about this? <sighs> All right, right? So that was on a Tuesday night at, Tuesday, no, Monday night at 11.14 p.m. I called, I, um, I called him up, you know, we, uh, you know, talk about it, and it's like, like Alex, you can be part of the problem or you can be part of the solution. And my wife hears me all the time complaining about our government and complaining about how we are not being represented well. And she is like, look, why don't you just stop complaining about it and just do something about it? You know, I'm like, I love you too, th dear. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, so, you know, so, so that was on, so that was at 11:14 p.m. on a Monday night, and then Tuesday, and then Tuesday morning, or uh, Tuesday at 4 p.m., I was at the office registering to be state represent, you know, for state, for state senate. Yep, yep. So here I am, right now, I'm running, and just really understanding that all along that God had a plan for me, right? And how crucial, like Pastor said earlier, you know, Chick said earlier, that because Christians have literally stepped back and allow the end, like Satan to take over, we have the system we have today. You know, when we don't step up and step up to the calling that God has for us, well, somebody else will, right? Somebody else will. But there is a blessing in that. And do you want to miss out on that blessing? I know for me, I didn't want to do it. But the blessing of being, being part of something that God had for me was a lot more greater than my, you know, than my own personal desires, okay? So I, so I just want what he has for me. And this is it. I am, I am grateful for that. But there is a battle going on. It is a spiritual battle, but we need to fight. We need to fight. We need to get up. We need to get out and vote. Right? We need to be engaged in the culture. Right? And I know for me, that's what I desire to do. And my family is coming along for the wild, for the wild ride. You know, it's been fun. It's been great. You know, and um, so I am here and I am running because I desire Jesus to be glorified in the state capitol. I do desire that. But but I also desire him to be to be known around here. So we have all of these chaos and everything happening is because of a nation that has turned away from God. And we need people with strong strong character, people with strong conviction. So how much more better is it for us believers and for us Christians to rise to the occasion and, and do not be afraid, do not be cowards, right? So much so now, it's so easy now for us to stand out. We should be standing out. 
Th this is not the time to cower. This is not the time to compromise. This is not the time, you know? So this is the opportunity that we all have. This is, uh, this is the opportunity that, that God presented before me. And he's like, hey, are you going to walk in this or are you going to not? The choice is mine, but missing out isn't an option, right? I don't want to miss out in what he has for me. And I, and I don't want others to miss out on what God has for me because it is not about me. It is about him. It is about the work that he's doing. And I am fortunate and blessed to have a church family that supports me in it. There's no way, well, it would have been harder for me to do it without them. I have a, a loving pastor, loving brothers and sisters who are committed to helping me in this mission field. And I am blessed by them. And I am blessed by Jesus. So uh, with, with everything going on, um, I am just thankful that all of you guys are here. And you guys are all showing your support. But you guys are also representing that there is hope, you know? There is hope. You know, we're all, we are all here right now fighting for our country, fighting for the values and trying to continue to uphold the values and the founding of our founding fathers, you know? So it's very encouraging to have all of you here. It is. So let's, so why don't we talk about the issues, you know, that, that we hear. We are united as American citizens, okay? We are. America is the greatest country ever, and that's a period, you know? <laughs> right, you know, and uh, coming from uh, another country, I kid you not, I have family members calling me, telling me, hey, hey, you know, Alex, the world is watching you guys right now. The world is watching you. So how you guys come out of this, everybody else is, is watching. They are. Okay? So we are at uh, a point right now where we can go to the right or we can go to, to the left. And we, can, and we can turn back to God and and bless him, or we can turn the other way. I know the direction that I want to be in. And you guys are giving me a pretty good in indication that you guys are heading there with me, you know? So uh, I had a lot, you know, but it's been great. I thank you guys for being here. You know, and I thank you guys for showing me support, and I thank Pastor Chick and everybody that's here. Amen. All right. Lord Jesus, thank you for my brother Alexander, and I just ask you, God, to just pour your Holy Ghost upon him and through him and over him, him and Cassie and all the missionary kids with him, that, God, that we would see supernaturally what would happen here on the east side. It hasn't happened, and so we need you, Lord. Not by might, Zechariah 4, 6, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So, Lord, we're doing all that you've called us to do. To prepare and send a missionary out, and he'll always be a missionary. He'll never be a millionaire, but, Lord, he'll always be a missionary. So, Lord Jesus, just have your anointing upon him in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, brother.